let's bring up our uh, guest for the evening, the highly intelligent one and only uh, Brian Attard from the Sports Box in South Jersey. Brian, nice hat. I mean, it, everybody asks me, like, do you wear Ranger stuff every day? I'm like, yes. <laughs> Why do you ask? <laughs> to some level, yes. So, Love it. It's hockey season at the end of the day. So let's just get that out of the way first. True, true. How are you doing, by the way? I know we got to see each other a month ago. Yes. How has the last month been for you? You know, as a, you know, a parent, a financial worker, and yeah. as I mean, a Cowboys fan. Sure. <laughs> the market's always interesting. That's always fun, fun place to be in. Uh, my son started first grade, which makes me feel very old. Um, you're catching between Disney trips. Our next one's in November. He doesn't know that yet. So um, it's been good. Can't complain. Never had a bad day in my life other than the fact that my general man my owner won't fire my general manager and that causes problems yeah and folks <laughs> while we're talking to brian if you have any questions feel free to yes. comment in the live stream we please, love our please don't please don't ask me if i know uh the player's endowment the way the owner does um not really <laughs> my area of expertise or interest apparently it's his um that's that was an interesting thing that nothing ever surprises me with that man it just doesn't yeah matter. Uh, Jerry Jones is an interesting uh, individual, to say the least. And with that being said, Dallas, it's been a struggle. They have allowed eight rushing touchdowns, Brian, through the first three games most ever in franchise history. Now, additionally, they've allowed eight total touchdowns on 10 possessions in the first half the last two games. And I ask you this, and this is why I bring up those stats. What is your defensive identity right now under Mike Zimmer? So the defense is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma, except that the answer to the riddle is that they can't stop the run. They can't get to the quarterback. Very simple. They have seven sacks all year. Six of them came in week one against the Browns. The defensive line play has been awful. So with that, it really doesn't matter who your corners are. It could be Darrell Rivas and Jalen Ramsey back there. They're not throwing the ball anyway. They're just running it down your throat. You look at the last two games, Derek Carr was 11 of 16, and Lamar Jackson was 12 of 15 with passing attempts. And then on the run, the Saints had 39 rushes for 190 yards versus those 16 pass attempts. That's a 71% run ratio. And then the Ravens come into town, and we know they like to run the ball. They have 45 rushes for 274 yards. You compare that to Lamar's 15 pass attempts, that's a 75% run ratio in a league that's, what, generally 60% pass? So you mentioned the eight rushing touchdowns against. They're just getting gashed. They're allowing 5.4 yards per carry this year versus 4.2 last year. In the red zone, they're allowing a 90% touchdown rate. That's not good. So until <laughs> until you can show that you can stop the run, why wouldn't the other team run the ball? I think about Mel Kuyper was recently on television talking about how they got to ban the two high safeties. Well, you know, if you run into it, you're going to bring one of those safeties, you know, more towards the line of scrimmage and help block the run. In this case, if I were you making an offensive game plan against this very extremely porous run defense, I would run it every single play. <laughs> until they bring a safety in to stack the box, which would then open up the vertical game. They're allowing 185.7 yards against on the ground. And that's what's happening, right? If you look at the Saints and the Ravens, they didn't have to throw that much to get to big production against the Cowboys. Saints receivers caught 11 balls, guys. 11. The entire game, 243 yards. That's 22 yards a catch. The Ravens receivers caught 12 balls the entire game. 182 yards, 15 yards a catch. And then the defense is hurting the offense. <laughs> it's pretty much where we're at right now. So what is the identity? It stinks. It's not good. Um, I, I'd like it to be better. It, the, the bar is low to be better. So let's try to get some improvement here. So you're saying that starting Devin Singletary is a good idea in fantasy. I fully intend to do so in the one team, I, the one league I have him on. Yeah, I have him 10%. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Well, to kind of go off of what you're saying here, you know, big the biggest guy on your defense is Micah Parsons, right? Is there something that he specifically can do as a player to help alleviate this 
you know, this pressure of running. I just think he has to get to the quarterback. He did it in week one. I mean, that's yeah. that changes everything. You know, if you have to start making better, quicker decisions, because there's this guy is running at you and taking down your quarterback, that's going to change your game plan, right? Mm-hmm. So whatever it is, I don't know if it's just a mental thing. The Cowboys are just not a very well-coached team. They haven't been for a long time, right? So it, it, it snowballs with them, right? Like when stuff doesn't go well, like it starts to really go terribly. And that's defense, offense, everything else. I mean, Parsons needs to be Parsons. I mean, I don't know if if it's coaching or if it's Zimmer scheme or what it is, but he's not been – I mean, week one he was himself. Since then, shell of himself, and that's not good. I mean, you, you need your stars to produce like stars, and if he's not going to produce like a star, this could this could get really bad really quickly for the Cowboys. Yeah, um, I'm not surprised. as Mike Williams saying – this whole season, it feels like the offense is not a thing. The aura is strange. Thank you, Mike, for mm-hmm. the comment. The aura. It's Jerry Jones. It, it trickles from there. Um, I couldn't agree with that statement more. Now, uh, quickly switching gears to the Giants. I'm sure you like Malik Neighbors as a player, despite being a rival fan sure. for football. Uh, make that very clear. Uh, what has impressed you about him through the first three weeks, and how do you think he'll match up against Trayvon Diggs? It, it, he really has just, you know, really been really impressive. If I recall correctly, when, when we did, I did the stat when I did my prep for week three pregame on the sports box, it was only him and Beckham were the Giants rookie receivers with 10 catches, 125 yards, and a touchdown in a game. I guess he did that against Washington. Um, you know, you're, you're – <laughs> The most impressive thing to me that he's doing is he's doing all of this with Daniel Jones as his quarterback, because I saw a tweet (laughs) from someone that was concerned that neighbors might save Danny's job. (laughs) Like that's kind of like where people are right now. It's such a, I I love the internet, but it's, it's so true, right? We've had conversations where I think I have Tom on my side that that, that they really do need to make a longer, long-term change. I, last week I I saw that vibe from you. Now we're getting to the point where, oh my God, I hope this guy doesn't save Danny's job because he's so good and make Danny look good. Like it's, but, but that's, I mean, again, again, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of drafting receivers high. I don't think there's the correlation with success. I think that the Giants looking for an impact player. You can get an impact player at that position. I also think if they could have gotten Drake May, they would have been over the moon to get Drake May. It just didn't work out, right? So they went with, let's start building around whatever our future quarterback's going to be. And, you know, you see around the league, what ends up happening is, and not necessarily neighbors from a contract standpoint, but just from like a, how much you're putting into the player to bring him in. It, you bring in these star receivers because you don't have the elite level quarterback and you want them to look as good as they possibly can. So you just surround them with as much offensive talent as you possibly can. I think I made the case after the Eagles Packers game in week one, that when they did the um, the player introduction, like all the, the heads at the bottom of the screen, that I thought it wasn't even close that Jalen Hurts was the worst player on their offense. Like that's how much they've stacked that offense with receivers and tight ends and the line and now Saquon. So, you know, I was I a fan of the pick from a schematic standpoint? No, I just don't like receivers that high, but you can't discount the talent. I mean, the talent's absolutely there. His body control is just unbelievable. He, he, I mean, I I think he's outshined Marvin Harrison to this point. Then I think mm-hmm. Harrison's got a better quarterback. So, you know, put those things together. Like, you really got to be impressed with what the kid's done really quickly. You know, for his sake, I hope he continues it. But that'll be expensive, too. You see receivers holding out two years before contracts now. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah, see exhibit Jamar Chase, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, then now they're 0-3 because he didn't play a single preseason down. It's amazing how this happens. You know? Very, very interesting. And speaking of contracts... Your guy, Dak Prescott, got his extension. And I'm curious to think of your thoughts. If you were to go back in time four weeks from now, mm-hmm. would you still, knowing what you know now, would you still give him the extension? I wouldn't have given it to him in the first place. Really? Yeah. No, I was very I was very dead set against that. And they actually, oh. that news broke during week one pregame on the sports box. So my face lost all life and color and everything. I was just so just, I mean, it's like you know the train wreck is coming. You know it's coming, but until it happens, you don't get that just release of just all hope and happiness. But it's just again, they backed themselves into a corner. They had no choice, right? Why it took as long as it did 
is because Jerry Jones is an ass clown. That is the only thing you can possibly say. And, you know, Tom and I, you, you and I had this discussion. Like, he, he, this is what he does. He is the single worst poker player in the history of poker players. He makes you think, oh, we don't need you. We're not going to give you all this money, yada, yada, yada. And then what do you do right at the end? You give them exactly what they asked for at the jump, which you could have saved yourself six weeks and a lot of annoyance. You, you literally, CD Lamb asked for 34. They negotiated, yada, yada. And you know what he got? 34. Why do we do this to ourselves? Because he wants to be the center of attention, the topic of conversation. It's nothing more than a game to him, you know, mm-hmm. like that whole media thing. So was I surprised that got paid? No. What I will say is this. The cap's going to keep going up and up and up. And this, and the next guy is going to sign a deal. Well, I'll do Dak. And the next guy and the next guy and the next guy. So it's only a moment in time. But again, I mean, I was ready to say, just let him go, let walk. I, I, this this is not an elite quarterback to me. I don't want to pay that guy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that was me holding on to a pipe dream. The longer it went, I'm like, ooh, but maybe, just maybe, and then no. But no, I would not. I would personally have moved on from him. But that probably shouldn't surprise you that much because I've been saying that for seven years now. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, no, I am not. I'm not a fan of the player. I, I, I think he's a winning player. I think he's a stat patter against bad teams and garbage time. That's just my view of him. It's just, you know, I feel like I broke a mirror. It's more years of bad luck. Let me add to, add to this um, statement. The longest tenured starting quarterback of the team who drafted him. I mean, look, he's got a lot of success, right? Of course, he's earned that. Team's always, you know, making deep playoff runs and stuff. So, yeah, why not? Who would be your quarterback, though? Are you available, Mike? <laughs> You got, you got anything going on Sunday this on Thursday? I, again, I, I would have gone and see that's the problem. So they back themselves in it because I would have gone into rebuild. I, I absolutely would have, right? Because outside of a few like really star players, right? This roster, I think, is just overrated, right? Mm-hmm. Like, look, I, I like Trayvon Diggs quite a bit. I don't think he's a star. I think he's a good player. Don't think he's a star. Micah Parsons is his is, is his own world. Again, Lamb is Lamb, but Lamb's a wide receiver. Like he's making your quarterback look better. So I would have gone into a bit of a let, let, let's go in it like like a quick, you know, two, three year retool, get a high pick quarterback in there and go. Like, that's what I would have done. But it's just, it's Groundhog Day. Like, you know, this is going to end. They're going to make the playoffs, probably. They're going to lose, and we do it all over again. It's the same cycle. If you could swap quarterbacks, though, with us, would you take Daniel Jones over Dak Prescott? You know, you know why I would? Because I'd be out of him in a year and I could go get another one. Fair enough. I, I said coming into the season that the best quarter, this was before the draft the best quarterback situation in the division was Washington because they had no contract to Jalen Hurts, no contract to Dak Prescott, no contract to Daniel Jones, and a high pick to go get one. That was that, that was the most flexible situation you could have. Again, I, 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 he is not a winning player to me. If they ever do find a way to like pull off a miracle and win, I'll be like, I can't believe they won despite Dak Prescott. Like He's not that guy. Nothing about him is that guy. He just... If you go back to like some of his, his his numbers, if you removed games against the Giants in Washington, he is below average as below average can be. Like he has padded his stats a lot in Giant games and Washington games, like four touchdown games, four in a yard. Like, like he looks like he's, you know, fantasy darling for what that's worth. But he just against now, I mean, now against good teams, he struggles mightily. He's not that guy. Right. Um, I am in alignment with you on that. I know a lot of people are not, but um, you don't have to convince that to me. (laughs) Um, Look, it it all stems back to them getting Zeke again, letting Pollard go. Like, what is the current backfield situation like? It seems to be kind of a catastrophe right now what's it like having zeke back there are you sick watching him back there or should it be more of a timeshare with rico dowdle well, i think it should absolutely be a timeshare i mean i think most most situations in the league should be a timeshare the, the, the bell cow back has become very much the exception and not the norm you know zeke is what he is he's a 29 year old running back and in running back years that's what you're 60 like that's you know that's old for a running back he does what he does. He's not doesn't do it overly well, but that's what he is. You know, I don't think that the reason the Cowboys necessarily struggling to run out, out of the gate this year is necessarily him or Rico Dowdle or any specific running back. 
I think it's more that the offensive line is really not that good at run blocking and they weren't last year and nothing really changed there. Um, People make all this talk about how they didn't sign Derrick Henry or Jerry said they couldn't afford Derrick Henry. I don't know what he says. He talks out of his ass. After that. But I, I don't see that as the reason, right? So Pollard last year was a thousand yard rusher. It's like four yards a carry. But I think a lot of that was because he broke up a couple long ones that would bring that average up. Like you didn't really get a lot of consistent four or five yards a carry, but he'd break off a 30 to offset the two. And all of a sudden your, 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 your average is better. Um, you know, they were middle of the pack last year, I want to say, um, in, in rushing. Um, I want to say it was like 100 and 110, 112, let's just say. Well, they're 73 this year, right? But they had 102 against the Browns. So I think a lot of their rushing problems is game script. They had 68 against the uh, Saints, I think like 50-ish against the Ravens because – you know, you're down 35, 16 at the half to the saints. You're down 21, six at the half against Baltimore. Like that's not a game script that says you're going to run the ball that much in the second half. Cause you are yeah. trailing and you have to get back into that game. So I, I think the raw number of their rushing stats is a little bit misleading as to what they can be because the games have just not lended themselves to let's go run the football. Right. So that will get better by default. It just looks bad right now because you've had such awful starts that you then really can't run the ball in the second half, which frankly puts a lot more pressure on your offense. Not that your defense is really helping you out that much anyway. And since we're talking about running backs and since we were just a few minutes ago talking about Jerry Jones and his money situation, what, what did you feel when he came out and was talking about the comments out like, Oh, we can't afford Derrick Henry. And then you go out and you pick up Ezekiel Elliott. Like what, well, Where's the disconnect there? Because obviously I know Derrick Henry is a quote unquote old running back, but like he's doing pretty well in Baltimore right now. Baltimore's built to run. I'm not Fair. surprised by that. Like I, again, I don't know that, you know, Derrick Henry makes a difference. I just think that if you had Derrick Henry, you might, you still probably be losing these exact games the same way. You know, Tony Pollard was by no means um, a bruiser, you know, very much a, finesse back you know make that first move and, and, and get yardage downfield that's why again he'd break off a long one but very rarely do you see him get that four yards the way derrick henry muscles his way to four or five yards right so i don't necessarily think that that's who it was jerry says a lot of things that jerry finds interesting and that's all jerry cares about they couldn't afford because i mean i wouldn't assign derrick henry either i don't want to pay a running back much money to begin with but you waited to sign Lamb, you waited to sign Dax, so then your cap coming in was a problem. So, like, that's a problem you created for yourself, so I don't really want to hear it. Like, if you're going to say, well, we couldn't assign the guy because, you know, we couldn't afford – well, that's a problem of your own making, so that's on you. I I do not believe that to have been the reality. I think that's what they're saying because that they didn't really ever want to do that, which I'm perfectly fine with. Again, I don't I – don't, Running back age aside, I just don't think it's a good use of, of resources to put money into a running back. The top two running, the top three running backs in rushing right now are Saquon Barkley, who you know very well, Jordan Mason, who was undrafted, and J.K. Dobbins, who was left for dead the last couple of years out of Baltimore. Right. So I don't. There, there is zero correlation between paying a running back and seeing this production. That's just, you know, unfortunately, and I say this a lot, and I, I really believe it to be true. Fantasy football has ruined the way we look at real football. And if we see fantasy stats and points, we assume that that means the player's good. Couldn't be further from the truth, but that's 2024 and how we are, right? So, yeah, Saquon's had a couple touchdowns. That's all great. He also had a pretty ugly start to his Eagles career. And he might, I didn't catch that one thing he missed in the game against Atlanta. So, again, it's how you, it's where you put your money. You know, it's just, I don't believe that that's where you should put money on the offense. I have no, and look, I will go to my grave saying the year they drafted Elliott, it should have been Ramsey at four and Henry in the second round. That was the draft I wanted. Would have worked out great. Didn't happen. Derrick Henry not being a Cowboy is not why the Cowboys rushing is as bad as it is. It's the fact that they are literally getting their doors blown off early in games, and now they have to start throwing the ball more than they want to. But the guy's getting $60 million, so throw the football, asshole. So, sorry for the kids watching. I get a little Love fired it. up when I start talking about him because I can't stand it's after 9 p.m. It's fine. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. uh, I guess, Sam, that, well, we could segue into C.D. Lamb because oh, yeah. Sam, that was another guy they waited to pay late, and Brian was saying, and now it's wondering if they'll do the same thing with Micah Parsons. And there's been a lot of stuff going on 
in Jerry world right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and CD lamb had that, you know, he had pretty bad uh, miss in the red zone last week. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what the giants is secondary is like, not that great. So going back to like this matchup specifically, like is CD going to like run all over the secondary or is he kind of still, cause I know that he and Dak had that tiff on the sidelines. He had to apologize for it. Like it's kind of seems like a little bit of trouble in paradise. If you want to call it that. Well, see, but that's, but I think part of the offense's problem is the defense, right? The defense is bleeding into them. The, they keep getting gashed on the ground. Mm-hmm. So then if the offense goes three and out, well, then the defense has to get back on the field. There's no time for them to recuperate, no time to breathe, right? So when I talk about snowballing with this team, because I think they're mentally weak, like I, I'm telling you, like, that's what happens. When something doesn't work, it impacts everything else. Look at time of possession in the games that they've, that they've gotten blown out in, right? It was roughly split against the Saints, but Baltimore had the ball 35 minutes out of that game. So the pressure that it adds on the offense to try and have longer drives is substantial. And when you have a frankly weak mental quarterback like Dak Prescott, like that can snowball. When it rains, it pours. And how many times have I said that, you know, Prescott's a garbage time merchant for stats, right? So in the game against the Ravens, he was 28 of 51, 379 and two touchdowns. Hey, your fancy team got helped, right? What do you care? But they had touchdown drives in the fourth quarter when it was out of reach of 64, 56, and 91 yards. It made it look a lot closer than it really was. Um, Again, I fully expect them to try to get Lamb involved early because of what happened last week. That's what they do. But if the defense goes out there and and, and Singletary is just running, they're getting four or five, six yards a carry, and they're gashing them, That's go- he, Dak is going to grip that football. He's like, oh, I can't. I got, oh, jump off now, idiot. He, they're going to force the ball, right? Like, Cooks is nice, but he's not a legitimate number two threat. They've missed Ferguson for a week. I think I think very highly of him personally. Um there's not, they don't have a lot of athletes at the wide receiver position. So it gets forced to lamb a lot of those. But again, they may force the Cowboys to air it out. If they're just dominating a lot of time of possession, like if the giants get the ball first and go on like a 10 play drive to go down the field and they just run right at this lack of talent in the interior defensive line. Like it could be a long night for the Cowboys. Like, you know what? I, I normally come on here and I'm like, yeah, we're probably going to win this game. Like pretty handily. I got to tell you, I, I don't have that feeling right now. And I will also tell you that if they, if the Cowboys don't do that, like if the Cowboys aren't the Cowboys against the giants, again, no shot against you guys. This is what history has been, right? If, mm-hmm. if, if it doesn't play out the way it's played out, you can start, you're going to start seeing a lot of more cracks on this team. Like they're mm-hmm. not, they are not the, the group that like, oh, we're going to take on the world. We're going to, you know, shock. We're going to get together as a group and get through this. I don't think they're coach well enough to do that. The Giants have a chance to really like do something very bad to the Dallas Cowboys Thursday night. I mean, that's do I think Dallas wins? Probably. But I, I, if it's not a style points win, like if it's not like a college football win that you'd be happy with, it's, it, it's going to get louder to me a lot of what you're hearing about the criticism, which is always there with the Cowboys is going to get louder. The Cowboys need this win way more than the giants do. In fact, you know, the funny thing is I think if we said to each other before the season that coming into week four, they had the same record, you know, I'd probably say, well, I guess I mean the giants are ahead of expectations and you'd probably say, well, I guess that means the Cowboys are off to a rough start. Yeah, <laughs> <Here> we are. <laughs> <There's> so, <laughs> it's kind of funny how that works out. I love that. And I want to talk about Singletary too and, you know, the run defense. But one quick question before that, based off what you just said, how warm is McCarthy's seat right now? How often, Tom, have you ever seen a lame duck head coach work out in the NFL? (laughs) (laughs) Like, like, like this is like, like Jerry Jones is an idiot. Like I go back to, and I always go back to this back when they did hard knocks originally. Yeah. Mm EO and Romo was on the team, right? They brought in Pac-Man Jones. And Jerry said, you know, I something to the effect of we're going to get the best of Pac-Man Joe's because he doesn't have any more chances left because everything happened off the field with him and then goes suspension and everything else. So, like, he thought that I'm going to get the best out of this guy because it doesn't work here. It's not going to work anywhere. He does that almost with these contracts. Like, he has to be put against a wall. Like, he almost feels like you're going to do your best because you want to get paid again, which doesn't work. Okay. It doesn't work. So McCarthy probably, I mean, things would have to go off the rails pretty bad for McCarthy to get fired in season. 
I don't think there's a shot in hell he's back next year because I don't think they're going to do anything if they make the playoffs. Which, by the way, for the record, let the record show. My pick to win the division was Washington before the season started mm. because I believe we're in the Giants. I think they're better off losing a lot of games. First. But that he, he, he is also very fat, yes. Um, what up, Andy? He, Love you, buddy. The, Great comment. The Cowboys and Eagles both looked to me as if they were houses of cards waiting to fall over. Whether it's Coaches looking for jo- fighting for jobs, quarterbacks fighting for con- or for the jobs, which has kind of come off a little bit. That Washington could just could just be the beneficiary, win a couple games and, and sneak in. I mean, I don't know what they do. I, I, he is not. I was fine when they hired him. It just has not worked out. That doesn't really surprise me. Nothing ever really does. His his seat is hot. Mm-hmm. If they if they, I mean, there's a stretch later in the year where they have like six brutal games in a row. Like if they if they're not at a winning record into that stretch. Like if they, they really fall off, could he get fired mid season? It's Jerry Jones, right? Can you rule it out? No, but I also think that Jerry's the kind of guy that doesn't want his decision to be wrong. Right. So he doesn't want to throw in the towel unless he absolutely has to. Trevor Lawrence is an extremely talented quarterback. He is just the results have not it's been just, there. He's just on a very, he's on a pretty poor roster with pretty poor coaching. And that's the result. Yeah. If he was in San Francisco, that team might not lose a game. Uh, he's probably right. Jerry going to get caught on any more hot mics at practice this season? You know, the the amount of times I've had a vision of Jerry Jones having like a Donald Sterling moment to yeah. being forced to sell the team, it's just, ugh, please. You know. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to like keys to the game, I, I think because – I'm still favoring Dallas, and that's probably who I'll wind up picking tonight. Yeah. But the Giants do have a legit chance to win this game. Sure I'd do. say about a, a 20% chance. Um, and here's why, right? They need to and should be able to establish the run early. Uh, you mentioned before, Brian, and I think, Sam, you would agree with this, Baltimore ran all over them on Sunday and – we were talking before, you know, eight touchdowns and 10 possessions. That's not good. And what the Giants have done the first three weeks of the season, they were able to do it much better in week two and week three. So new O-line coach Carmen Brasillo loves the duo pushes up front, and they were unable to do it last year because they had a piss poor O-line coach. Sorry. Um, now he's with Washington, by the way. Um, Bobby Johnson, that is. But you brought in John Runyon, Right. You had to overpay for an above-average guard, which he has been very, very good since coming here, especially in pass protection. But um, his run blocking has helped Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas was already a top-five tackle in the league before the season. Now he's getting even better. Uh, John Michael Schmitz is sandwiched in between two serviceable guards. You know, Greg Van Roten is probably our worst offensive lineman right now. He would have been second best on the Giants offensive line last year. Um, And that's not bad at all. So what Runyon and Thomas have been able to do, they'll duo push the edge and the DT to the second level. And then the linebacker gets shaded off, which Singletary just runs right through it. And that's a big problem. I could see that happening with Dallas specifically. Uh, This defense too is giving up 29.7 points per game so if the duo push succeeds it's going to be a problem um and not to mention if you're dallas you have to stack seven guys in the box the problem there is malik neighbors gets left one-on-one on the outside and then brian your free safety obviously he's going to have to help and cheat a little bit which will also open the middle of the field up so if you're brian dable sam i'm looking this game is in your favor if you establish the run early Score a touchdown, get ahead. It might be a long night for Dak Prescott and these Dallas Cowboys. I mean, Brian said it. Brian said it. As long as the Giants are running right in the beginning of the game, they're going to struggle towards the end, and then they're just going to be hoping C.D. Lamb catches it. You know, at the end, it's, it's it seems very plausible. It, I hope it's a good game, though. I genuinely hope it's a good game because 
I feel like it it has the potential to be a very close game. Like, I don't think this is a neighbor's game necessarily. What I think they do is they continue to run. I mean, if I were the Giants, I'd run the first. Mm. I'd run until they t- till I, I don't get three, four yards on it, right? I would. I think play action is going to be a problem for the Cowboys, and I think that if they get neighbors once or twice and they just have to account for them, it'll open up the run even more. Like, I think that he – I, I came, I always tell you, like, I would, when they had Saquon, it was always like, make Danny, Dan, Daniel Jones beat you. Don't let Saquon beat you. In this case, it doesn't really change that much. It's don't let the running game beat you because that is your weakness. Neighbors will get his, right? But I think that that will actually open up the run more. Rather than have the run open up the pass, use the pass to open up the run. And then just abuse what is their weakness. Mozzie Smith has not worked out as a first round pick. And then the interior of the defensive line does, does not – like that's where they're really getting – they just – they can't stop anybody. And if it's because they're trying to rush the court – we're not doing that well either. So pick something and work on it. <laughs> Figure something else out. But it's it's not – like, look, I mean, them being one and two is not a huge surprise. I mean, the Saints game could have gone either way. You Probably for the season – I mean, look, the Ravens were 0-2. They really needed that game. Like, I think that – whatever. Like, I'm not going to – nitty nitpick whether you get blown out or you lose by three it's the same net effect i really don't care but it's one of those things like i said where if the giants can kind of impose their will early the cowboys might just fold like that's the thing like they're not a team that i think is mentally strong enough to you know mount a comeback despite the fact that they kind of almost did that in week three i think that was more the ravens having indifference if nothing else it just like it was it was too little too late I mean, Sam, we were talking, right? Short week. Dallas is mentally frazzled right now. In all all due respect, Brian, this is the week you might want them. Two losses in a row, short week, not a full week of practice to prepare, right? Um, How how could the Giants pull it off? What do you think? I mean – we always start the game with a run. Like, I feel like every like, we never pass the ball in the first play of the game to begin with. Um, but no, genuinely, the uh, honestly, spoiler alert, I'm gonna pick the Giants to win this game. I, I, I think that I'm I'm gonna roll with my confidence that I came in with last week, seemed to work out last week, and I'm gonna roll with it again this week. If the fact that I mean, it's a short week for both of us, too, to consider that, mm-hmm. but. The, it's almost like it's good that it's coming so fast because we just had that momentum going with Jones, with neighbors, with Singletary. Like, it's almost like, okay, like let's just play a game as quickly as possible to like make sure we don't lose that momentum. And I think that that's, that's part of it. Right. And then of course, you know, we're having, we were talking about it earlier in the show, the Odell Beckham pass was against the Cowboys. We just saw Malik neighbors do basically the exact same thing. Like there's a lot of, I hate to say like good energy, but like, I think that that is a huge part of the giants winning. It's like confidence. If you actually have confidence on your team and you have a guy like Malik neighbors making plays and Devin Singletary running all over the field, keep rolling with it. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a big problem too. And Andy, I think DJ has put two solid games together already. I thought the Washington game was solid. I thought last week was solid. Um, can he make it three? He's really struggled against Dallas. I'll tell, tell you that. And I think that's a concern, right? I think for Dallas, Brian, right. It's trying to stop the run so you can get into Daniel Jones's face and force him to make mistakes. Cause last year you guys destroyed us in MetLife and you forced Daniel Jones to make mistakes, which unfortunately he's very prone to doing. There's some moments where Daniel Jones looks good. There's other moments. Daniel Jones looks like a fifth grader analyzing a defense back there and like what the hell is this guy doing i mean people are laughing that we're six years into daniel jones Mm -hmm. um i'm sure you are too i mean listen i I, we've talked about this i go back to the same situation i I think it just it is what it is but the year Mm -hmm. that they made the playoffs and played the vikings who were a to begin with and got a win i I mentioned you i i think it pushed the franchise back a number of years because it extended the life of that offensive core 
that maybe if you didn't see that, maybe if those coin flip games that year went the other way and they finished with a worse record, that maybe then they have the ability to go get to go draft a quarterback or not bring Barkley back. Because then, again, how do you sell a fan base that, oh, we need to go through wholesale changes? We just want a playoff game, right? I mean, the arrow was pointed up, right? You, you were very bullish at the time. I, I understand it. I get it. I just thought that, like, well, I mean, to get to this point, they really kind of – there were games that year. I think the Seattle game, the Tennessee game, where – could have gone either way. It worked out for them. And then they catch the Vikings in the playoffs, which had just a complete fraud. But again, it's the NFL. So, hey, how do you how do you sell a fan base that we need to bust up the roster that just went to the playoffs? You can't. So that's why I'm saying like that modicum of success, I think, just created the environment that then delayed the point they should get to this year where they make the change and they go, which is fine. I, I think that they listen. If they end up with a Carson Beck. I mean, I think that's that's great. Like, I think that that's what you build around. I just think Jones is not that guy. Like, I don't. The the, the crappy part for you guys, I think I mentioned this to you too, is had they not done that, had they done anything else other than Daniel Jones, you probably have Justin Herbert. Because <sighs> they they loved him that year. They loved him, but they couldn't do it. They couldn't. They couldn't just walk away from the sixth overall pick from the year before. They 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 loved her. They took Andrew Thomas. They yeah, loved yeah. Herbert that year. But they, they how, how do you do it? How do you take another quarterback? You can't. You yeah. cut it. So decisions end up like you know, the butterfly effect of things. Mm-hmm. Like I go back to when they took Barkley. Had they taken Sam Darnold, then Darnold would have flamed out just in time for them to go take Justin Herbert. <sighs> you can analyze this and like drive yourself nuts. Don't get, I do it. It's it's it, it, it's true too. Like, I'm saying, like, like you you follow it through and like damn that would have worked out like this or it would have worked out like that. It's it's really true, and I, I just think that there there are a lot of factors that went into this whole thing, yeah. and one of them was Dave Gettleman, unfortunately, and what I think Joe Shane has done. Sam, you you and I have talked about it. He's been able to fix both sides of the line, something the Giants couldn't do in a decade. The O line is good, finally. The defensive line, I think, is a huge concern for Dallas because you have two rookies starting who are good, by the way. They're not bad rookies, but Tyler Guyton. Left tackle is going up against Brian Burns. Uh, Cooper Beebe, the rookie center, is going up against Dexter Lawrence. In my opinion, the best nose tackle in the league. Um, look, Cowboys are averaging just 73.7 rush yards per game. They're going to be throwing a lot of passes um, on Thursday night. So, yeah, it's going to open a lot of opportunities for the Giants to pressure Dak Prescott with that front core of Kayvon Thibodeau who was on Jerry Jones' draft board, by the way, pretty high up on it, mm-hmm. um, as was Evan Neal. I would never consider that a bad pick by Joe Shane. Even everyone loved Evan Neal at the time, sure. including us. Um, Dexter Lawrence and Brian Burns, those three specifically. So, look, we had eight sacks last week. And another thing, too, people overlook, it's not just the players. It's the scheme. Mm-hmm. Shane Bowen's scheme has been really, really good the last two weeks. It's sort of like a puzzle, right? Like Jason Pinnock, guy that we all love, safety, is always lining up near the line of scrimmage or on it. He can shift. So BB's going to have to shift right. And I think your right guard is Hoffman. Um, Hoffman's right, and then I forget who right tackle is. It might be Tyler Smith, or Smith might be left guard, actually. Um, If you shift right, you're going to have McFadden blitzing down the middle, and you can block that off, but the problem is Brian Burns gets left one-on-one against rookie left tackle Tyler Guyton. So that's a massive advantage for the Giants because they're able to get there with three guys up front. You have a linebacker who can blitz well, and you have a safety that can play in the box. Sam, and I know you and I have talked very highly of Mike and McFadden and Jason Pinnock on this show. Those two have been very underrated players that I don't think – the national audience gets a good perception of them just because they're never talked about. And I mean, we, we've been missing McFadden a bit because he's been dealing with an injury, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's the giants defense. It was like, almost like they were our saving grace last year. And now all of a sudden they're kind of like, not, (laughs) they're kind of doing the opposite now. And I mean, as long as, I mean, Brian Burns just got his first sack last week, right? It's like where where was he weeks 
one and two. And then Kayvon. Kayvon, I don't know. We need to put his face on a milk carton or something. I haven't really seen much of Kayvon too, too much. This Giants defense definitely is the weaker part of the team, which is so alarming because normally <laughs> that's, that's saying, yeah. not not the same New York Giants that I normally know. But I think once they once they turn that little bit and they get that fine tuned, man, it's like crazy how this team can be incredibly good. I fear that you know what I did say. What I did notice though, once I wore that Tommy DeVito shirt on the show two weeks ago, all of a sudden Daniel Jones is doing so well. I'm just saying. If he starts tanking again, I'm going to put it back on. <laughs> apparently that works. You got to look behind him. If somebody's still there, then uh, yeah, yeah. The job, right? I've never seen a third string quarterback get more attention in, in the NFL than Tommy DeVito. Like, it, it's what about insane. Ben DiNucci, cowboy, mm-hmm. Italian? True, true. Is he from the Northeast, though? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and yeah, Zach Martin. Shame on me for forgetting yeah. that as a Notre Dame fan. Um, Larry says, I'll be at the game tomorrow night. Have fun. I think Anthony will be as well, Larry. Maybe you guys meet up. Most uncertain he's been about our matchup in a while. I've been to MetLife Stadium four times in my life. Uh, WrestleMania 29, WrestleMania 35, the Stadium Series game, and the Cowboys found a way to lose to Sam Darnold's Jets. <laughs> so that's my experience at MetLife Stadium. Um, and before we, you know... I guess make our official picks and scores of the game. Sam, we'll start with you. You know, quick player to watch on both teams. Who do you have? Um, I'll do the obvious for the Giants. I'll say Devin Singletary as my player to watch. Um, mm-hmm. also because I don't want to regret regret placing him in my flex position this week. Um, and I'll even say Brian Burns on the other side of the ball for the Giants as well. Um, and for the Cowboys, I mean, gosh. <laughs> like uh, Micah Parsons, like I'll say Micah Parsons because that's probably going to never be- heard of him. Yeah, <laughs> I-, I think that you know if anybody's going to be stopping us, it'll be him. So I'll I'll say Micah Parsons. What about you, Brian? So I I think that it? when they get Deron Bland back, their their secondary will be a lot better. But I mm-hmm. but they are at their most swag level when Trayvon Diggs is running back pick sixes, right? So I think if if think if Diggs can have a game, I think if I th- again, you, you're trying to cover an elite receiver, right? I mean mm-hmm. that's not a very easy task to do. But if Diggs can get a pick, I think that that can be a momentum swing. Like they they need something good to build on. Like there's just been nothing. Like it's just been all bad. And if you're a weak mental team, like you just it, it everything just flies. So I think if Diggs gets a pick I'm I'll be happy with that. Offensively, I'm always I always think Jake Ferguson should get more play than he does because I think he's a big body. I think it's exactly what Dak needs. Um, you know, across the middle. You know, you 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 gotta get you gotta get guys off of, of CD Lamb who can beat double coverage. Like he's that good, right? But like I think if you can they need a legitimate second threat. And if that's gonna be Jake Ferguson, great. Make it Jake Ferguson. So wouldn't surprise me at all if the Giants try to play a little bit of deception. You know, maybe Wondell Robinson gets a touchdown this week because they're trying to they're oh, they're yeah. over correcting to neighbors, right? That'll <laughs> happen all the time. But you yeah. absolutely no zero question about it. You absolutely must start Devin Singletary everywhere you have him, and don't put him in your flex because he's playing on Thursday. Everybody does that. Drives me nuts. Your Thursday players need to be in your non flex spots just in oh. case something happens later. Good. That's super smart. I'm going to do that right now. Yeah, because very good. Him, point. Okay, so because again, if you put him in your flex, right, all yeah. of a sudden, like one of yeah. your running backs is in, now you can't put a receiver there. Another good. player. Very good point. To keep an eye on. I mean, Tyrone Tracy in a couple weeks might be a PPR um, deep flex guy. You definitely want to keep an eye on, on him. He's a pass catching back, runs the ball well. Now our running back too. I'll go quickly here. My players to watch. Brian, you took mine with Jake Ferguson. Good for you. You know I love tight ends. Uh, I'm going to go all defense here. Um, I mean, you could throw Jalen Tolbert in there, but, I mean, we know the the Cowboys are going to throw on the Giants. Their secondary is weak. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence, yes, he's older, but 12 sacks and 17 career games against the Giants. That does not bode well for them. The difference now is that the Giants have two good tackles. 
they've never had two good tackles going up against the Cowboys as long as the Marcus Lawrence has been there. Um, I also like the Marvion Overshone a lot on your second level, Brian. I think he's a really good linebacker. Um, yeah, good in Mike Zimmer's scheme for the Giants. And we talked about Malik. We talked about Wandale. Um, yeah, Slayton is questionable right now with a thumb on a short week. I mean, he's expected to play, but I don't know how often he's going to be targeted. Um, yeah, I really think it's going to come down to, like Sam said, Devin Singletary. Wandale is a good option in this game. Completely forgot about Wandale. To I, be honest. Unfortunately, Jalen Hyatt's been a non-factor since coming here. He had one good game. One. Slapped his face I like him coming party. out, too. Yeah. It's, I don't know what it is. Route tree, offensive scheme, long adaptation to the NFL playbook. I don't know. But um, if the Giants have time to throw and time to the side, keep an eye on Tyrone Tracy on offense and then defensively, uh, Jason Pinnock, guys. Uh, I think he deserves to be mentioned. Blitzes often and hangs out near the line of scrimmage. He's going to be instrumental this week because you don't want to give Dak time to throw because of Dory Jackson and Drew Phillips, two of our top three corners, have both been ruled out with the same injury, calf injury. Sam, by the way, you and I love Drew Phillips. Uh, third round pick out of Kentucky. Awesome slot corner. Great against the run plus support. He can drop back. And there you go. That's going to be tough for the Giants. And one other thing I mentioned, Dallas, you want to keep the Giants in a base set defensively so that Brian Burns has to play more of that linebacker position than coming out the quarterback. I, I think that's a huge uh, acknowledgement there, too. Um, but, yeah, it's time for our picks. Brian, we will start with you. Uh, we know Sam is already going with the Giants. Yeah. But do you agree no, with that, or are you still rolling with that? So – I'm on record saying the Giants losing is long-term winning. I'm not going to deviate from that because I think they need to be as high in this draft as possible. I'd actually, if I were a Giants fan, be kind of mad they won last week, but that I view things differently than most people. Um, it, it, the Cowboys need this win like oxygen. Like I think that if they go to one and three and then have a week and a half to have to hear the national media talk about why they're one and three and in last place in the East, that's going to drive somebody nuts, right? So given the spot, I think Dallas absolutely has to have the game. However, it is not going to be the drubbing that we've seen because they're not there right now, right? So I think the Giants probably that that line is I thought I think I see it at six. Like that's probably right. Like a 27-20 game, like feels like the Giants are in it to the end. Maybe that's when they get this pick to seal the game. But if, if they're down seven and they get the ball at the end, like they're gonna have a shot. And that's where maybe you don't trust Danny Dimes to 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 win you the game, despite the fact he's throwing to Malik Neighbors, right? So my gut tells me like a 27-20 Cowboys win that it's not it's not the put your backups in, in the second half. Like the, the, the Giants are gonna make them work for it, is my point, right? So as a Giants fan, that's kind of really what you want, right? Like you want to be in games, but you don't want to screw your draft position up. Like it's I I, I get like trying to like thread thread the needle. Like I totally understand I, as a Rangers fan, which went through a rebuild, like I I'm I rem, I go to games. Hope they play well and lose. That's all I want. <laughs> Get me a high draft pick. We'll worry about it later. I think the Giants are very much in that same kind of mindset. So, again, you will not be upset with your football team at the end of Thursday night. They probably won't win, but they will not let you down. It will not be this, I'm turning it off at halftime and watching reruns on TV. Like, you'll, you'll watch the end of this game. Real quick, by the way, I happen to see something on Twitter you're going to find interesting. Did you hear what Cam Newton said? Oh, God. What did he say? In reference to Eli Manning's Hall of Fame nomination, he said, and I quote, if he gets a gold jacket before me, I deserve two of them. Is he on drugs? Yes. <laughs> I don't see any Super Bowl rings on Cam Newton's fingers. No, well, I'm sure he but there's he has some fashion jewelry. They have one that looks like it. He might have sure. something. No, I look, I mean, we can have a conversation to the nth degree about Eli. That's a deep discussion we could have at any time. Mm -hmm. Cam Newton's never done anything in the NFL. So I, that's to me like, hey, let's if we're hand, look, Eli Manning is infinitely more qualified for the Hall of Fame than Cam Newton never will be. hundred percent. I wholeheartedly agree. And on that note, the Giants are gonna win tomorrow. 
because I believe in them. But I think it's actually going to be a much, much closer game. I'm going to go one point. I'm going to go 21-20 Giants. I think that it's – but I completely agree with you, Brian. I think that it's going to be down to the wire. Like, they're going to be working for it. That's what I'm hoping for. Like, that's the type of game that we're going to get. But I do think that the Giants are going to be able to come out just a little bit, and it's going to be a nail-biter. I'm not saying that we're going to go into this with, like, whoo, no problem. But it's – I think it's going to be much, much closer, just a one-point one-point game. All right, so I guess I'll be breaking the tie here, folks. Um, mm. I see the pain in Tom's face. He's going to pick the Cowboys. I know it. I can tell. Find a good poker face, Tom. <laughs> like an open book. Um, yeah. <laughs> look, the Giants have beaten the Cowboys once since 2016. Dak has never lost to the Giants, I think, since maybe his rookie year, if that. Um, look, it, it's been a, it's been a struggle. The last time – the Cowboys lost to the Giants. They lost 23-19 at MetLife. I have them winning 23-19 tomorrow night um, as a reverse jinx. Look, this game is going to come down to one player, Braden Aubrey. Uh, Brandon Aubrey, the kicker from Notre Dame, converted soccer player. He is the best leg in the NFL. He surpassed Justin Tucker as the best kicker in the league, in my personal opinion. He can boot 60 yarders like it's nothing. Um, He's just really, really good. I like to see him kick. Um, I don't like him seeing seeing him kick against my team. But, Brian, I'm sure you could account. He's one of the best players on your team. He's not just a kicker. He's a player. Yeah. He's a weapon, right? Because, I mean, he made ones from 65 that I think would have been in from 70. Like, he's going to break the record at some point. And McCarthy allows him to kick, I mean, because he has a lot of faith in him, which Mm -hmm. he's earned, right? So, right. Like that's the um, thing too. Like they don't. It's it's insane, right? Like this. It's like you have this advantage over the rest of the league where you can get this guy that can make sixty six yard field goals. And you still can't figure this out. Like right. it's just like it. Well, Giants lost the game on field goals in week two. We gave up seven of them and I lost remember, the game. Yeah. So. It, it, that won't happen this week. No. Um, no. But yeah, Dallas wins twenty three nineteen. However, last week I predicted the Giants to lose. Sam predicted them to win. Sam was right. So. Sam, I hope you're right again. <laughs> I hope so, too. And I was very close with that score. I was very close, so I think that that has something to do with it. Also, since we love tight ends, quickly want to shout out Giants winning on Daniel Bellinger's birthday last Sunday, 24th birthday for Belly. So My good. king. Excellent work. Uh, Ryan, any final thoughts, man? It's been a lot of fun having you. Just to share with the New York crowd, uh, 98 years ago today, the New York Rangers were born, so it's, I'm glad I'm wearing my... Happy birthday, New York Rangers. Sam, are you a hockey fan? I'm a Rangers fan by default, but I don't really watch a lot of hockey. Um, I used to when I was younger because my dad and I watched a lot, but not really so much anymore. There's a parade. You're still invited. Yay. I still got red, white, and blue. <laughs> exactly. exactly right. yeah. <laughs> um, no, like I said, I just th- th- this this has the makings to – like it, it can potentially be – like a massive disaster. It's semi-national television, right? Like you have to have prime to watch it. But I'm, I'm telling you, like just envision the scenario. Cowboys go lose. Ugly or not, they lose. And all the national media talks about all day Friday and all day Saturday and all day Sunday morning is the Cowboys are one and three. They just paid Dak Prescott. Oh my God, Jerry's going to kill someone. What's going on? Like, it, like that period of time may literally the giants it's crazy to say it's week four but they literally could put a nail in the cowboys coffin with a win because it's gonna get bad like they had super bowl aspirations i didn't think they needed to but they did they thought so they thought so anyway right so like you come out one and three you lose to a team that you regularly destroy it's gonna get very bad in the media and I don't think the players are strong enough to overcome that. So the, the Giants have a chance to put like a really big hurting on the Cowboys. That's why I, that's why I said I think the Cowboys need a pretty win. I mean, they get a pretty win. Um, but this is the hole they dug for themselves. So blame yourself. A couple comments here on the share of the post. Uh, they didn't land the actual comment stream, but shout out to my cousin, John Unterweger. 
uh, with his comment. Tommy the Mac McNamara says Cowboys 31, Giants 17. Oof. Interesting. Rough. That is rough. Um, but yeah, Brian, thank you so much for joining. Folks, make sure to check out Brian. Um, actually, let me let you plug yourself, Brian. Where can people find you? Yeah, so a uh, little place called The Sports Box. You may have seen it once or twice. Uh, we've kind of been a little light on the podcast side, but we still get the news out to everybody. We're always on Sunday mornings doing pregame. Uh, I personally run a Rangers page called Blue Truth, which has seen a lot of good traction. It's back to hockey season. The Rangers open up two weeks from today, so if you're a Rangers fan, you can look there. Uh, we're big supporters, big fans of RNP. Think you guys do a wonderful job. Um, I came into the year thinking you guys would struggle to get through this year because it's just I thought it would be a rough year for the Giants, but good for you that you got the win. Um, uh, let this no matter how sometimes the giants will let you down you are here every week and there is something to be said about that and i respect the hell out of that and everyone else should too and you're not going to find more passionate giants coverage than you're going to see on this show so i suggest that you continue to watch it every week like follow and share thank you so much brian and sam of course uh by the way folks if you don't know sam on nights of big blue avenue does double duty does her podcast with jordan before the show and sam where can people find that yeah, so the Unsolicited Podcast is on YouTube um, at the Unsolicited Podcast with Sam and Jordan. Um, Giants fan, Eagles fan. It's fun dynamic. Um, and you can find us on social media everywhere, the Unsolicited underscore podcast, and on Twitter at Sam and Jordan. Love it. Love it. And Jordan's a great Eagles fan. Um, as we know, the Brian's an Eagles a- fan I know. <laughs> I mean, Brian's the not many guy. people can use the word great and Eagles fan in the same sentence. Let's just She's you know. genuinely. I mean, nobody's perfect. I, I talk to her. She's a very nice person. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then, folks, for some reason, if you're interested in my outside content, um, make sure to check out From the Stands, college football sports show with myself, Andy Hopper, Brian McArdle. We're actually filming in about 10, 15 minutes from now, so I know they're both watching. Wait for me to hop off, but uh, just kidding, guys. Love you both. Uh, Sam, Brian, thank you so much. On behalf of Brian Attard, Sam Cardona Norberg, I'm Tom Scavetta saying so long from Big Blue Avenue. Make sure to check us out on all of our social media, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And without further ado, let's go Big Blue. Thanks, Andy. <laughs>